we believe tonight. Amen. Amen. We want to take some time to pray. Anyways, before I go ahead, that was an awesome one from the choir. You have been out of this world today. Can we please help me celebrate the choir? I want us to pray. As Minister John began to lead that song, the Lord began to walk certain thoughts into my heart. And one of the things that my son, Pastor Princeville, said in the Lord yesterday stayed with me when you were leading us to pray. You were emphasizing that one of the reasons why we engage the way we engage is that we have gotten to a place and we have found out that we don't have options. Some people have systems upon which they can thrive. We have found out that our faith is sealed. If it doesn't come true, then it means the story of our breakthroughs will never be told. That's, that's, a, that's where we have gotten to. Our lives will be wasted if it doesn't show. And these are not statements that we make in the public so that people will feel that... Um, we are on a pursuit. Jesus knows that without him we cannot thrive. The gates are closed. You see, but when God begins to express as a fountain, when he begins to express as a flowing river designed to bring all kinds of realities to people, one of the things that may block your reception, even in the day that these rivers are available, is the absence of discernment. And that's what the Lord began to speak to me about. John chapter 4, verse 10. John chapter 4, verse 10. You will grab the hand of your neighbor because it's possible that your neighbor needs more time to understand. I'm just going to be speaking for a while and then I'm going to be out of your face. I've been I've been preaching all week and we had a good time with Pastor Michael and his very beautiful wife this morning. Uh -huh. So, Jesus answered, if you know, oh, what translation is this? No, 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 no. This talks about the generosity of God. No, there was, there was a name that was given to Jesus from the King James perspective and that's what I want us to see. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God. Jesus was saying to her, What is standing before you or sitting before you on the well and speaking to you in your mind is a man. But this is God's gift. And what you find out if you keep working with Jesus is that there's no greater gift that God wants to give you outside the person of the Christ. If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him and he would have given thee living water. Sometimes, because we have not discerned the presentations of God to us, we refrain from asking, we refrain from drinking. You want to ask the Lord that the eyes of the one whose hand you are currently holding will be opened. And that they will be able to discern the presentations of God in these seasons of drought. <laughs> oh Jesus. There will be discernment all over the building. And if you are watching online, it's a good time to be intentional. Oh, 
petete to find shona to ata kabiloto kanto beravadita shanta tete toma batuta shaito batuta tiketo voroto kota shamba to akakata ta oh chicken bokelete shekete kito monto koto rata ai kopete susutale ai kobarakaba kite kompata dai pepeta to shonta kapata ta open my eyes cause my brethren to experience the unlocking of vision that in this day of drought you will be discerned give us eyes that can behold you give us eyes that can discern you shine more at all sampon teto state tale so pa 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 ta sapata ti pe 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 tai ratos kata ta ta te kambotanto u pa to ta pa po to ko te ta akate pe pe nan to pa po ta ti to se se ma bo sa to pa po ta ri ata a ra pa te vo sa to a fi ti te te i ve te i ve te i ve ku ta ka ta ta o kali te ku ma pa pranz ka ta di o sa that we will behold you that we will behold you keep on kokate bambata o ta to ko li to monte luata ran to pa konda te ya ai ta pepo ai ta pati to sa pai ko ta te ke ke te ele te ke ta palos sa pa ta kai sa pa ta ka ta bi to ko fan ta pola ta ko sa ai to be hold you e ko fan te kai to feri te ti e to to fan ponte to am pa pa ka ta po pe tu te le ta ko ko e to ko man ta ko ba ai a ko pe pe bren skanto o ban to ko te li ba to ya e po bi o ke e to am moska e to ka moska la to e ka fan la to bras sa to tin ba ko le e pe to pa pa ai kai fera to te sete pa ai sete ta pa pa ta ni o ta ai oh let all blindness be far removed let all blindness be far removed that we may discern unto a drinking that we may discern unto a drawing oh god give us eyes give us eyes let the scales fall off how can we accompany you on this journey and not be able to discern you poile come out sami no toko talanta rasatano si betete venantoria rato bokoto mantoale ai lekete some notoria sai tembresianto soto kote lampi meta koto wape boke kukai wape kapoko tokentai akata to atakata kai toye sai tekete ope lipeto si petwati litasperati ratete pasteti tapara ribe soma ai feta Jesus open our eyes open our eyes <laughs> thank you lord jesus in jesus name i pray your the love you were light You make everything more right uh, and devoted to you and forever. Oh, you are love. You are love. That's the sunlight. You are love. Oh
thank you for open eyes in the name of Jesus tonight we ask that you will bring your counsel to us in a way that only Jesus would have if he was physically present with us and that as we press in prayers engaging that which you have clearly painted before our eyes there will be entrances tonight in Jesus name we have prayed I trust God to be done in about 40 minutes and I invite my son Pastor Princeville to bring maybe deeper perspective there's a way you handle scriptures now that um, please be seated thank you there's a way you handle scriptures now I was advertising to my wife that much prayer has done a lot to him yes okay am I right uh, much prayer has done a lot to him in in bringing the counsel of God one of the things that praying much does is that it quickens your utterance and what we define in that shape as utterance is the ability to put into a human language something that is spiritual it's not everything you see you can explain but when you pray much it unlocks utterance i saw that again yesterday so i, I told him yesterday night because by the end of my session yesterday morning, I was worn out. I still had to do an evening session, and this morning we still had to do another morning session. So I'll, just, I'll be done in about 40 minutes. I just, I still have Tuesday, so. Um, maybe on Tuesday we'll have one of the pastors come, and then I'll just finish. And then Sunday I'll be fresh. I'm not sick, uh -huh. I just need to rest. I just need to rest. So tell your neighbor that he's not sick. He just needs to rest. Many of us have sent me prayers and it's encouraging. It means that I'm in your heart. Please keep praying for me. The work is much. There was something I was going to do in the lorry yesterday morning during the minister's conference. There was something I was going to address that I, you saw me stop and say, Lord, should I, should I not? Let me not do this thing. I woke up this morning and I had a message from far away in Europe. God sending someone to tell me that thing that I put in your mind must be said. There is a sword I want to bring on a class of men and you must bring down this sword it must be publicized that a sword is coming and that that sword will land so i understand that there's a new gate that is opening to me my labors i need two things i need faith to do what i've been called to do and i need wisdom there is a dark kind of wisdom that a man can begin to utilize in executing the deliveries of God, which is a wisdom that sifts the utterances of God of their substance. Are you with me? For example, the prophet Nathan had a very dangerous assignment. The king had misbehaved. That was then. And he needed to go to the king to tell the king, God is coming for you. But he was afraid. So you find out that when he got to the king, what he decided was to build a story. And the king, king as it was, was quick to bring judgment. That, that thing that you, this one will do to the man. And then he now said, um, you are the man. But there are other dark wisdoms that God sent you to tell somebody, I'm coming for you. You now say, God said that he's coming for somebody. It's still a kind of wisdom. Are you with me? But that wisdom sifts the utterance of God of its weight. It's dark wisdom. I'll show you my wife this morning. That we need to unlock Jacob. Yes, unlock Jacob 
in our generation. I may not have the ranking to speak to the generation above, but we need to unlock Jacob in our generation because there's a, there's a strange wisdom that is called Jacob in the spirit that God must deliver us from. I'll do the building and I started meditating on it. But that wisdom must die if Jesus will thrive. It's the wisdom that, um, how do I put it now? It's the wisdom that labors to please so that a blessing can be connected in falsehood. So that if you were a father in the land and I wanted to inherit your wisdom, I will look, at, I will look for what massages your ego, even if God is angry with you. And I'm going to do that thing. Clothe myself in a garment that you like. Ensure that my smell is a smell that appeals to you. Even though my true perspectives is different. My nature is different. I may not be in agreement with what you are doing. God may have convicted me that your pathway is wrong. But so that I can collect from you, I will clothe myself. Jacob, through his mother, knew what could please Isaac so that a blessing can be corrected and he was willing to mask himself in a nature that was not his just to get. And God told me to say he's angry. I said it in the Lord yesterday. The relationship between father and sons allows for God to speak from fathers to sons and sons to speak to their fathers. That's how God has built it. Is somebody with me? Yes. If you feel, if there's something God is doing that you don't understand, prayer allows for you to raise a concern. To say, oh God, I don't know what you are doing with me. And it is not dishonor. But... People are laboring to massage egos so that there can be a getting. And God is angry with it. If Jonathan stays too long with Saul, he will fall when Saul falls. Because the sword of the Lord will come upon the land. That's one of the things Jesus told me to say. We can please ourselves unto a blessing, but when the great one is angry, he's angry. Be careful what you align yourself with. Be careful who you align yourself with. When men displease God, don't line up with them. Men who displease God still have what to give. But be wary of being too close to a man that God is displeased with. Because when he goes down, everything around him goes down. I'm saying so much. But this ego massaging thing that a generation has found is not godly. It is manipulative and God is displeased. I will trust God in the coming weeks to show to you the dark wisdom that was carried out by Jacob. So that everyone who is guilty of it will walk away from it. Stop clothing yourself as Esau. You know if you have a relationship with God that God is no longer pleased with an Isaac generation. Don't be obsessed with a blessing as to become an enemy of God. That's something that God told me to say. Don't be obsessed with relevance and become an enemy of God. Standards in this kingdom are, 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 are straightforward standards. And God, according to scriptures, is no respect of persons. 
It's a rising movement in Nigeria. Where on the grounds of honor, we have proved the things that God disdains. And we massage the egos of people who have gone south in their pursuit of God. People who are no longer upholding kingdom values. We massage their ego in the name of honor. God frowns at it. Remember, ultimately, there are three sides in every battle. And three sides have emerged on the Nigerian Christian landscape. A father generation, a generation of sons, and God. We've blessed the name of the Lord for the fathers who have aligned with God. And like we raised a cry in the Lord yesterday, till they see Jesus, God will keep their feet from failing. Is somebody saying amen? amen. However, there are those who have failed God. And if you have a relationship with God, you know that they have failed. You know that this quagmire that we are in, where there is no more king in the kingdom and every man does what comes to his mind, where the authority of scriptures is no longer the authority, and men with twisted interpretations are trying to apportion to us a pathway to travel, when you find people who have taken a position against God and against his word, don't align with them because judgment is coming. Before this mess began, he spoke to us when we gave the declarations for the year that all kind of strange obscenities will be heard in the name of error and it will last for nine months. And that by the end of the month of September, a sword will rest upon our land. May you not be outside the camp of God when the sword comes. Honor fathers, but don't bind yourself to the enemies of God. Is somebody with me? Okay. I'll bring a wider scriptural perspective in the coming weeks. So that... Um, Pastor can come. Please come with me to John chapter 17. We're still trying to look at the subject of um, a new weight of glory. And it is because there is a promise we have found in God. A promise that advertises that that which we have found is not all that there is in God. One that advertises that we are in a time when God is willing to lavish more on those that will give him a chance. When I began, I began from the first three verses of John chapter 17 using Jesus' entrance utterances in his high priestly prayer. I will continue today from the fourth and the fifth verse. And I trust that God will give me some bit of speed. Jesus said, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Next verse. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self. With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. If you remember where we began from, joining from the first verse, Jesus' utterances in prayers advertised that he had discerned the times in the realms of God. And like I said to us, while we depend on a clock system, a clock that gives us the consciousness of hours or minutes or seconds or the lower ones, the clock of heaven is built into the emphasis of the spirit. And so it's possible to sustain a season in God for 10 years. 
And if anybody feels that you were designed to have started doing something new, you will need to educate them that the shifts in God are built around the emphasis of the Spirit. So that if your work with the Holy Ghost is one that um, sponsors feedback communications, until the Spirit speaks, nothing is new. I know that in our dimension, we, we build our lives around monthly emphasis, some people daily emphasis, some people weekly emphasis. As good as those things are, they will not be accurate until they are sourced from the Spirit. What I'm saying is, you cannot because we need to transit from 31st to 1st Assume that God is shifting in emphasis. You will need to consciously engage him to know if there is a shift. Remember, when the word of God was advertised in Isaiah chapter 55, the Bible said, so shall my word be. It will not return void. An empty return, give me Isaiah chapter 55, that's where I am. The empty return of the word of God means that there is no fulfillment. The word is designed to travel back with the answer or the result of that which was projected. 55.11 So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. One, in this portion of scripture we find out that of the possibilities of the lips of God, one of them is the administration of his word. Two, we find out that when God's word is sent forth from his lips, the word of God is gifted a cycle of travel. So it goes from him like a boomerang. It goes from him, it goes to target, and then it comes back to him. And God is saying the word is programmed not to return until it has fulfilled. It means if God speaks to you and you have not aligned for fulfillment, the word will hang. And there are utterances that hang for generations. Because nobody has engaged. The word is programmed to wait until it can return to say it is done. That's what the Bible is saying. The Bible says, instead of returning void, it shall accomplish that which God pleases. And it shall prosper in that thing, no matter how difficult it is. There is no environment too strong for the prosperity of the world. It, it operates, you know, away from the environment. It's programmed to prosper. The environment needs to align with its mandate for prosperity. So until the word returns to say done, seasons don't change. Am I saying that once the Holy Spirit has spoken to you, he will not speak again until he's fulfilled? You may have other instructions, but the other instructions will be to the end that you secure accurate alignment for that word that emphasis to come to pass. That's the testimony of scriptures. That the word is programmed to be possible. And no matter the opposition, the word will return saying, I prevailed. May the word of God in your life, in this season, begin to make that backward journey because it has prevailed. In the name of Jesus. Alright. So, Jesus discerning the times began to make a request of the Father. Father, the hour has come. There is an emphasis of your spirit. And because of the discerned emphasis of your spirit, I am making a demand Within the context of that emphasis, I find out that what you want to do is to glorify your son or glorify yourself. So I'm asking that you will glorify me. 
Jesus' request to be glorified was premised upon a knowledge that he possessed that God is glorified within the sphere of the earth when his sons are glorified. So when you hear such scriptures as Romans chapter 8 verse 19 saying to us or revealing to us an agenda in God that the earnest expectation of creature waited patiently for the manifestation of the sons of God understand that the manifestations of the sons of God is going to occasion the manifestation of God. Because when the sons show up in their bright colors, they will be advertising the Father. To that end, Jesus spoke, or in that wise, Jesus spoke to Philip. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So the revelation of sons is also the revelation of the Father. This advertisement that Jesus was asking for was because he discerned that God was hidden. Do we have this morning session recorded? Okay. So, one day you help me walk to get it. Every time God is hidden, what actually happened was that the sons have gone into hiding. Every time God is visible, it is because the sons of God have emerged in all their bright colors. It is because God's vehicle of advertisement is a man. And like I said this morning, it was an agenda that began from the beginning. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. That if earth we know what we look like, they just need to see a man. And they will know what we look like. So in case you are not inter interested in this glory agenda, what I'm saying to you is that it means that your life has been programmed to deprive God of an opportunity for visibility. The original cry is, I want to be visible. And when God says he wants to be visible, the songs must cry, make us visible. When God says, I want to be glorified, the cry of a son is glorify me. That was Jesus' request. The hour has come, glorify the son, that the son may bring glory to you. Advertisement. Advertisement. Oh, I was saying something to my wife before I left home. I said, I'm desperate before God. I'm asking that God should occasion the possession of certain potencies. We want to quench the doubts of those who think that our God is not alive. And we have found out it's not going to come down from heaven to do it. Heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. The earth is as given to the children of men. It means that the advertisements of God in the earth have been assigned. The, the, the business term is outsourced. You understand outsourcing? M maybe, um, what skill do you, what are you studying? It has to be nursing because every time I see it's a nurse, I see. So this evening, I, I told myself that if I have an opportunity to, I don't think I've spoken to you before. It's strange though. How do I not speak to you and you'll be here? Be talking to me. Some of you have never spoken to me before. It's not good though. So I said if I had an opportunity to speak to you, I was going to ask you. I hope it's nothing you have studied. If you have not studied nothing, cross home. Eh? You have studied nothing. Okay, um, I don't want to interrupt my service. What was I saying before I went to nursing? Pastor, we have not solved this problem. <laughs> Outsourcing. Okay, do you have any skill that you do? What do you do? You make... Okay, these, these things, they hang on the hair. Okay. So if you had a contract to make 50 before tomorrow morning, are you good? 
No, can you alone make 50 before tomorrow morning? Ah, man, you are strong. Bro. Okay. Can, can you do a thousand before tomorrow morning? Okay. So if you have that kind of order, what some people do, which is bad business, is to say, I can't meet up. And if you are those that can't meet up people, may God help you. What you are supposed to do is to learn the wisdom of Peter. The wisdom of Peter is if a miracle occasioned a great haul of fish, then you should be willing to invite your brethren to bring their boats. You will begin to look for those who do that same thing and who can do it at the same quality. And what you will do is that you outsource. You give the job to them. You just have, it means your profit will be lesser on those ones but so that they can earn something. That's what we call outsourcing. It's giving assigned work to some other people to do on your behalf. I'm saying that when it comes to the advertisement of God in the earth, God has outsourced it to sons. People in your family, people in your department cannot know what God looks like. If you don't show up, advertising him sometimes when I know that my son's cravings are genuine I go all the way to meet up with the demands and my wife will look at me sometimes to say ah, he can do without it I'll tell my wife I'm trying to demonstrate what his heavenly father looks like that God responds to the desperation of his children because I understand that on his way to knowing God, who is his father, that advertisement has been outsourced to me. If I misrepresent God, his perspective of God will be skewed. Are you with me? That's what Jesus was saying. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he might give eternal life to as many as thou bring to him, and this is eternal life that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Verse 4. Let's go to verse 4. Jesus was placing a demand, but at the same time, he was giving a report of how he had labored. Remember, the demand was what? Glorify the Son, that the Son might glorified him. So there was a future shape of glorification that Jesus was going to engage in as a future assignment but there was a and there was another side that he had perfected. What it meant was that God had glorified him and because God had glorified him, he has also glorified God God. But you see, in the administration of glory, there are weights. And I'm going to try to explain to you if I have the time. I don't think I have. Maybe I'll do that on Tuesday. What these weights of glory are. For example, if we congregate wristwatches together, maybe we say, if you are wearing a hublot, bring your wristwatch. You understand what glory is. One of, the, one of the, 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 the indexes by which we can know how glorified your who blot is, is how much did you buy it. You will find out that as expensive, the original who blot, the senior one, we buy vehicles, one restroach. Because it will be in, in, in hundreds of thousands of USD. But somebody said, I bought my own. For 2,000 naira. Then we know that you bought your own at Odroba. That's where they sell 2,000 naira who blood. Somebody could say, oh, my own is expensive. I bought for 20K. I'm not sure that you get an original who blood for 20K. Anyway, if it's a who blood party, everybody who wears one, as long as they wrote it correctly, that is not who bought. 
Uh-huh. You will be gifted admittance because you have something to show. But what will be on display in the party will be the glories of the whole blood range. It's like in vehicles too. If we are doing a Mercedes party, if you had a 1979 Benz 200, you will be given admittance. You may even be honored because it means your car, your car has, uh, there's a way they, they call those cars, vintage. That, oh, okay, ah, it's long, like that Shagari Benz. That car, you kept this thing. But there will be glories of Mercedes. So that in the school of power, there are glories of power. In the school of wisdom, there are glories of wisdom. This one will demonstrate his wisdom and we will not be able to say it's foolish. But when another heavier weight of wisdom comes, ah! There's a word Yoruba used to say. One yoku dear. Yoku dear kato. Is there but there's a deficiency. There is a display of wisdom that even wise men will say, you are wise. You know the scribes, the Pharisees were the wise men in the Jewish system. But when Jesus began to bring forth utterances, their feedback was, what wisdom is this? They, 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 they went on a journey of inquiry. See, oh, some people are wise people too. That was what scripture, or that is what scripture is advertising here. Jesus is saying, my request is not a new request. It's just a fresh request. I made it before. You gave it to me. And I ensured that in the giving, you were glorified. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Next verse. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. You may not fully understand what Jesus is demanding until you do a journey into Philippians chapter 2. And you are walked from the sixth verse to the ninth verse to carefully articulate what, you know, I, I call them the nine the nine sacrifices or the nine layers of the submission of the Christ. When I was to reteach it, I found out that there were eight. The first one was a gate. Then the others are the layers. The gate is verse 5. Let this man, this mind be in you. So it was the interpretation of the mind that gifted the eight layers. Are you with me? Okay, you found out before. Good, I'm happy. So... It was the interpretation of the mind. It, the mind was his possession. It was not what he acquired. But in trying to interpret how that mind expressed, we saw eight layers of sacrifice. One of the things that was advertised in sacrifice was that even though he was in the form of God, he counted it not robbery to be equal with God. He decided to shed, shed his deity. And take upon himself the nature of a servant. Jesus was saying, Give me back that deity status. What he said had possibilities. Are you with me? He had journeyed as man for so long, but now he was on his way, on his way to the cross, and there were things that he needed to, to contend with that required a greater weight of glory. Maybe I should say to you that when God begins to prompt you into a greater weight of a dimension of his reality, it's because something is coming that is stronger than what you have. We used to sing a song. Um, is it the Yesterday is Gone song? Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Holy Ghost, fire, breathe on me, 
For yesterday's gone Today I'm in need Holy Ghost's power Breathe on me Scripture says abundant unto the day is the evil thereof. It means every day is measured or every day is apportioned a measure of evil. So you find out that to mitigate the expressions of evil, the Bible says, blessed be God who daily loaded us with benefits. The benefits that God assigns unto every day is strong enough to quench the strength of evil that is assigned to that day. But so that none of us will travel having contacted God only once for a lifetime, Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day. A day is not essentially a 24-hour period in God. It's a complete season of spirit emphasis. So he's saying, for the demands of this season, give us strength. Because in scripture, strength, food is not for pleasure. Food is for strength. So it's a demand on God that the strength that is required for every season in God is received. Once that season goes out and a new season is born, you will need to go back to say, Lord, give me strength for today. For strength for today and bright hopes for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousands beside. Glorify me with thy own self. And in trying to interpret what he meant with thy own self, he said, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Before there ever was an agenda around incarnation before there ever was a redemptive agenda there was a place where i stood when i was with you one of the verses of scripture in the book of john that advertises the stature of the christ was john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word there was a concept in god and that concept was with god and that concept was god so in saying glorify me with thine own self he's saying i was with you and i was you that's how we began bring back that weight of advertisement let it be obvious that in the fellowship we have is father and son that we have achieved oneness let there be no aspect of your existence that is not unveiled in my own existence that's what jesus was asking of the Father. And it is that request that the Holy Spirit wants us to ask in this season. Let me close. When you have found out the emphasis of the Spirit, you must understand that the delivery of the Spirit in that day of emphasis comes with a few coordinates. The cry is to everyone like we see in Isaiah 55, like we see in John chapter 7, Holy oh, that thirsted, come to the waters and drink. What God will do is invite. One of the coordinates is come. The word come, come suggests that to be able to lay hold on what God is advertising, a man will need to engage on a journey. So, if I look at Mawa and I say, come, you will need to cover distance. And with covering distances comes a conflict. These conflicts are, bu or conflicts, these conflicts are built into distractions, are built into reluctance, because you may take two steps, and maybe you behold a damsel. Then you now weigh if coming to me or going for the damsel is worth it. If your eye has not, been, has not been judged as a brother, you can be going south 
and a damsel can make you go not without talking to the damsel. I mean, you just be held and say, Kai, I follow this person. Uh, mm, if you are that kind of victim, may God help you. Amen. And because the existence is victim existence. There are distractions. Remember Peter. Jesus said, come. And he began to do the impossible. And you will have felt that doing the impossible was going to bring excitement. An excitement that will propel, will propel him to sustain his work. But you see, the fact that Jesus said he should come does not quench distractions. You will need to resolve that until I arrive, I will not stop. Peter looked away and began to sink. Jesus, the Bible says, straightway reached out for him and pulled him up. But you find out that his journey on water also ended. May your journey not end on the strength of distractions. Yeah. That was Peter. So, a damsel, you may suddenly also be aware of yourself that you would rather be somewhere else. So self also can cut off journeys. You may also feel that you have been laboring since morning and your body is stressed. And after a few steps, you build a home along the way. If somebody locates you, you will no longer be able to say, I did not move. What you will not be able to say is that you did not arrive. So there's a journey. Come. That's what the Lord is saying. If it says come, the first advertisement is that there's a journey. The second advertisement is that there is a place. There is a place. There is a place in God where new weights of glory are delivered. So Prince, five to seven minutes, I'll be out. A few years ago, there was so much noise around immortality. And I remember we had God's servant who walked into town and did a golden job. The apostle Gideon Odoma. If I remember clearly, one of his postulations was that um, Eden was perfect. And so a man was placed inside it who was also designed for perfection. But when man chose imperfection by eating from the wrong tree, the bondage of corruption hit the earth and degeneration began. So much so that when God began his recovery attempt to make perfect again his man, Earth is also going to come into perfection, but not this earth. You cannot put a perfect creature permanently in an imperfect world. Just like if your need is boiling water, you, maybe you have cold, you want, to, you want to warm your chest, you don't put it in a regular grass cup, it will fracture. So the purpose of a new heaven and a new earth is to house the new man because our place is not in heaven. We are permanently creatures of the earth and has made us kings and priests unto our God and we shall reign on the earth. So, uh, so you need a perfect habitat for a perfect being. Are you with me? That was one of his arguments, if I remember. So, in the same way we understand that there are certain weights of the glory of God that cannot be received in certain places because they will render those places Whoa, What's happening? Call Timothy. Sorry. So, where was I? Jesus. 
Ok. Ah, help me. Good. So, you need to... There are dimensions where certain men don't have access to. And if you don't have access into that dimension, the weight of glory that is measured for that dimension cannot be yours. Let's look at one example. And it's a very common one. So that we can go to pray. Can I have my phone? Yes. I think I'll be able to track better from there. Sorry. Jesus, help me. Second Kings chapter 6 is what I need. Give me the 15th to the 16th verse. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. Now I need you to pay attention because we are trying to define the realities or the, the structures that defined a particular dimension of existence. When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth when he went out, behold, and host. So if you were in the dimension where the servant of God had access to, what you'll be seeing is an host, an army, which surrounded the city both with horses and with chariots. Are you with me? That's what you see. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? His concern was genuine because in the place where he dwelt, there was a site that he sustained. And you understand that when I speak of glory many times, I speak of an advertisement of what is. So the glory of the dimension where the servant of the prophet was, was designed in a host which came with chariots and with horses. That's how that dimension was advertised. Is anybody confused? It's like when you come to church tonight, okay, give me a roving mic. How many of us can see physically here this evening raise your hand though. you can physically see okay stand give a microphone to this sister in black and white tell us what you see tell us what you see physical sight tell us what you see we don't have microphones What's happening now? Okay. I see a congregation of people. A congregation of people. So that's one thing she's seen. What else can you see? I can see the pastor. Okay, you can see me. Oh, Jesus, she can see me. She can see me. So she can see me. She can see the congregation. Can you see the speakers? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so 
if we gave you a pen to sketch how this dimension is advertised you will write people pastor and I'm people too I'm not an angel people too a pulpit a backstage design speakers that's what you see yes, sir. and based on those things that you see we cannot say that you are blind yes, are you with me good all right they can pick up the mic that's how this dimension is described but if that is all that you see in the real sense you are blind because outside your two physical eyes proverbs chapter 12 verse Proverbs chapter 20 verse 12 advertises to us two extra facilities which come in singular form that you have two eyes and two ears your two eyes are for sight right your two ears are for hearing the bible says that there is such a facility as is called the hearing ear so it's not ears it is the hearing ear one single ear another that is referred to as the seeing eye and the bible said that the lord had made even both of them you see that seeing eye begins its labor by sight but perfects his labor in a knowing when paul was praying for the church in ephesus in ephesians chapter one he said that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened the name of that seen eye is the eyes of understanding this one is a knowledge-based eye so come here are you in a relationship have you beheld a damsel? Oh, your answer, answer. Something like that. Okay. Is there a brother who has not seen a damsel? Have you seen somebody? Oh, yeah, stand up. Stand, stand up, stand up. Now, you can see a fine sister. But you, you must not marry because she's just fine. Discernment makes helps you journey from knowledge to understanding. That's what that eye does. That eye can take you on a journey of your next 70 years to tell you what the woman will become. So that it's possible somebody tells you that she's not good for your today. And because you know that your today is transient, you have a future in God. If that lady fits the future, you'll be willing to journey with her into that future because her relevance lies there. That's the strength of the eye. With that eye, you can, God can send you to Igbo. And you may think that there's no future for you there. But that eye has the ability to bring to you the understanding of your sending. That he didn't send you there to waste. He has an agenda that he wants to perfect in you. And that Igbo will unlock that dimension. So you will journey well. That was the kind of eye that Abraham had. That gifted him the ease of transition. Get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, out of thy father's house, into a land that I will show you. And you must ask God for that kind of sight. Because the sight ends with a knowing. You may not be able to explain to every other person. But a knowledge that is stronger than mental knowledge is lodged in your spirit. And if they tell you, will it work? I know that it will work. How will it work? I don't know. But what I don't know cannot affect what I know. It will work. That's how the eyes function. Are you with me? Good. So, let's go back to our story. So, they were standing together and one was asking, what shall we do? Next verse. And he answered, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. The first dilemma that this servant will have is that based on the advertisement of their current dimension of existence, there was nobody with them. He only saw a host, their chariots and their horses, they were isolated. 
to be wasted. A songwriter says, it may, this is how I fight my battles. He said, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. The Bible did not give us a picture of how the servant received these words that they are more with us than are with them. Because based on the utterance of the prophet, the battle, the real battle, is not in this dimension. It's not between us and them. What determines the outcome is the numbers in a realm that you don't have eyes for, but that I am aware of. I'm trying to show you how proximity does not solve the problem of functioning with different weights of glory. That you can be directly with someone and what he's interfacing with is so different from you. Next verse. Next verse. Help me. 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Which eyes? If somebody comes out, we say open his eyes. It's a way of saying he's. He had sight in a dimension. But his fearless, his entrance into the posture of fearlessness was not possible at his current level of sight. He needed to exit where he was to saw what was available in God and then he would journey with that. Open his eyes that he may see. He's a blind servant. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw. And behold the mountain was full of horses. And chariots of fire round about Elisha. So there, there were two dimensions that Elisha was interfacing with. His confidence was not because he could not see the host. And the horses and the chariots. It was because he saw that they had more numbers in a realm that was not visible. So if you look at both of them, if you are, if you are portion a spiritual reality called boldness, Elijah will be more glorious than in boldness. You know, you can be glorious in things. Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods, who is like unto thee. You are glorious. It means you are advertised in holiness. Are you with me? Good. So if you can be glorious in holiness, you can be glorious in some other things. So let's leave out holiness and let's put boldness or faith or confidence. Elisha will be more glorious in confidence because he had access to another dimension and what was available in that dimension made him more glorious than this man who only had physical eyes and was afraid. Are you with me? There are weights. But these weights are, ba are dimension based. So when God wants to give you a new weight of glory, one of the things he does is that he brings you into another place in him. I trust God tonight. That as God's servant begins to speak to us and leads us to pray, there will be transitions. For the servant, it was the cry, open his eyes. Tonight, the cry may be gift access. Bring from there. Through here to here, so that fear may be dispersed, so that a cloud of doubt will no longer hold, so that anxiety will become a thing of the past, so that impossibility will no longer define the utterances of this man that God has chosen. Well, with these few words of mine, can we make welcome God's servant? Um, Pastor Prince.